What's up guys, Heeking here bringing you a new preview discussion video regarding some rumoured leaks for Resident Evil 4 Remake from our good friends at 4chan again. So yeah, take this with a grain of salt guys. Before I start, remember to like and subscribe and yeah, let's dive into these recent reviews that we've gotten. So yeah guys, as you all know, Resident Evil 4 Remake is happening. Those of you who didn't realize that, yeah, it's happening. We're getting a remake for 4. It's pretty much been confirmed since 2020 thanks to the uh, Capcom hack leak and the Nibadi leak. Is that what they called it? But uh, yeah, uh, we were supposed to get, uh, what is it, we were supposed to get our Resident Evil Outrage, which has disappeared into nothingness, but no one knows what's going on with that. Now rumors are saying that was a multiplayer game. We were supposed to be getting Resident Evil Outbreak, which could still happen because uh, a lot of the games on the on the NVD leak, whatever, have actually slowly started being revealed, so that could still be a thing. Uh, Apocalypse apparently is RE9, don't know when we're going to hear about that, most likely at the end of 2024, so you know, don't expect that game anytime soon, because I think that will come out in 2025, uh, that's my best guess. Uh, and then of course uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake, there's also a Resident Evil Hank game, but you know, everyone's forgotten about that. But Resident Evil 4 Remake was pretty much in both of those, mentioned in both of those leaks, so this is definitely happening, plus all the reports about the uh, development switching, etc, etc, so this is a thing, this is a thing that's definitely happening. Um, what's confusing is we're not getting a Cold Veronica remake first, we're getting this, so what's going on with that, right? But yeah, let's just dive into this, guys, because uh, there's a lot of information here. Again, I don't know if this is real or not. Uh, honestly, I think uh, most of it is BS. But keep in mind, some of this could be actually true, because I wouldn't be surprised. You know, Capcom have shown with the uh, reimaginings for RE2 and 3 that they don't really care. Do you know what I mean? Like, they really don't care. So if it comes to, like, cutting content or changing things in a big way, they will do it. They don't They don't care. You know, people will sit and go, oh, those games were great. Like, they weren't great. They, they were good for what they were, but they weren't great, okay? They, they took a giant douche on the original games, okay? And this, this will definitely take a giant douche on the original RE4 game, which I don't mind because I don't like the original 4 RE game. Like, as a game, it's great. As a Resident Evil game, I think it sucks completely. Uh, so I, I don't mind if it's going to go into a completely different direction as long as the story is better. That's my hope anyway. But uh, this is mostly gameplay stuff, I believe, and uh, I, gu I guess there's some story spoilers in here, if this is legit. Again, remember to take with a grain of salt. So guys, let's start this then. Um, I'm just going to be reading for all of this, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. So here we go then. So this is by a new, uh, does this news even have a name? Uh, he just calls himself Ori4 Remake on the uh, 4 Chan League. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this brief, but I have intimate knowledge on Ori4 Remake. I am sharing it here because other places I know of, such as Reddit, aren't going to work. Which, which is true. Which is true. I mean, uh, if you go on the uh, Resident Evil Reddit forum, they just ban you the moment you post any leaks or rumors, whatever. They don't let you post that stuff there. So yeah, those guys on there are, are pretty much dicks. The mods that work that forum are, are dicks. They're power-hungry douchebags. Um, they, you could have posted on the RE4 uh, you know, uh, subreddit, you know, they let you post stuff there, so don't see why it's the why don't see why you didn't do it on there. Uh, 4chan seems to seems the most obvious, it's the most obvious because you can post BS as much as you want. Okay, uh, my proof is is that the game will begin being teased in an update to Ori 4 Remake, uh, Ori 2 Remake, which I expect to be pushed mid to late May. So, let me get the, my proof is that the game will be it will, will begin being teased in an update to Ori 2 Remake. Why would the why would an RE4 game remake be teased in an RE2 remake game? Why? Just because they did that Joe Valentine thing where they teased RE3, like like they, it updated and you find a file from Joe Valentine and Ken Dusha, and it's like, oh my god, Resident Evil freaking uh, free remake is confirmed. I think by that point it was confirmed, but a tease? Who the hell is playing RE2? Who is still playing RE2 Remake at this point? I mean, okay, fair enough. It, it, it is a good game. To, it is a good, uh, fun game to play, but... A hardcore fan still play? I consider myself a hardcore Resident Evil fan. I'm not playing it. I mean, I played it recently. What, like, a, like? did I even play it at the beginning of this year? I might have played it at the beginning of this year. And that's it. But, like, am I going to go back to that? I don't know. But, I, I don't know. I feel like this is stupid. Wouldn't it have made more sense to tease it in an RE3 remake? I don't know. 
Uh, if you don't believe me, screen cap this so that when this update is released, the information I'm sharing will be verified. This update will be a new file unlocked upon beating the game as Leon. Yeah, I, I call BS on this. It's called something like moving up and details Leon being contacted by members of the Secret Service after escaping Raccoon City. You can read it upon the credits ending. The game has a, had a number of level and story reworks, the most important of which I'll detail. Okay, so immediately I feel like this guy is just BSing with us. Like, uh, how do you read a file at the end of a game? Can you read files at the I don't think you can. Like, you, know, you just you just get this little sub updated thing and you go, oh, I'm gonna click on this at the end of the game, like the menu readers. Like, no, that doesn't that doesn't shut shut up. <laughs> okay, now we'll get into the meaty juicy stuff. The basic gameplay is extremely similar to Ori 3 remake. Oh dear. It's not bad actually. However, the dodge mechanic has been replaced with a party. Mechanic. Okay, so uh, this was a mistranslation. He was supposed to be. This is supposed to say parry mechanic. A parry mechanic. How does that work? Is that sort of like the counter attack uh, in RE6, which you had to time properly and then you could counter an enemy, which was pretty good if you could do it right. If you couldn't, then you're pretty much screwed, right? This only works against irregular Ganados, with rare exceptions. Ashley no longer follows Leon throughout levels. Instead, she hides inside special save rooms. This is because the devs wanted to avoid player frustration with AI. Uh, what? Special save rooms where Ashley hides? That doesn't make sense, though. I mean, she she no longer follows Leon throughout levels. Instead, she hides inside. What? I don't. Wouldn't she follow you to the save rooms, though? And then what? You just hide her in the save rooms, and then when everything's clear, you just get her back out, and she follows you. Is that is that what they mean? Like. Okay, maybe I can see that happening. Maybe because uh, no no one liked the escort missions of Ashley in the original RE4. Like that honestly was piss poor. Like I don't know, but okay. Uh, when a new special room, uh, when a new special save room is reached, a chase sequence begins. Leon must return to Ashley's location and escort her to the next. Chases are unique and depend on the area. For example, Salazar's right hand appears during one of these sequences in the castle, tailing you throughout, only giving up once the new save room is reached. Um, I don't get, again, I don't, I don't understand this. So, you take Ashley to a save room, you go about doing your thing, and then when you want to take Ashley to the next save room, you get a chase sequence. Am I the only one that finds that weird? Like how that's how that's how that sounds like it's going to be implemented? I don't know. That's that's weird. Uh, the merchant returns untouched. Law was planned to be established, but was cut as to keep him mysterious. However, he now has a Spanish accent. Well, so much for Paul Mercer coming back and giving us that. What are you buying? Ah, I'll buy at a high price. Stranger, stranger. Now that's a weapon. Who oh, is it? God no. <laughs> I'm gonna miss that voice if they don't bring that back. Uh, okay, this one is gonna piss people off if this is legit. And honestly, I can see it happening, but at the same time, it's like, really? Krauser has been cut entirely from the game for being overly confusing. The developers felt that the lack of establishing law, law for him and Leon's uh, comrade dynamic makes him out of place. Wow. Wow. So Krauser apparently has been cut from the game. Uh, first of all, is this a fan favorite? I like to think he is a fan favorite character, but even in the original RE4 when I played it, I just remember thinking, who is this dude? He comes out of nowhere into the plot, and then we're supposed to buy that him and Leon have this history, and it's like, like, who are you? Who, who are you? Like, it makes no bloody sense. Uh, he did have a great boss fight, he did have a great quick time event, and he had a great character design, but... I, honestly, I just thought, who is this guy? Like, he just randomly shows up, oh, yeah, we're gonna keep him. If he gets cut from the game, from this remake, I wouldn't be surprised because he was just such a pointless random character to integrate into the original game in the first place. I honestly thought it was Nikolai when I first saw him, and I was like, who is this? Is this Hank without his, uh, without his helmet, maybe? I don't know, but... Uh... I don't know, I just thought he was such a pointless character. They did develop him really well in the uh, Dark Side Chronicles game, I thought, which... Which made which made that relationship make more sense, but then the problem is he's such a small part of that overall game. So it's like, why is he in there? So I wouldn't be surprised if they cut him out from the game. You know, people will be like, oh, they can't do that. That makes no sense. It makes it makes it, Capcom does this. They cut enemies from the from the other two remakes. Uh, they cut Barry from Resident Evil 3 Remake, and yet yeah, that was a cameo from the original game for the ending. They still got rid of him. 
they could have used him and expanded upon him, they did, but they just caught him, do you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, this is different, that was a boss, this, this that was a cameo, this is a boss character, but it's Capcom, they like to cut things, so I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, moving on. Okay, so, uh, this is regarding Lewis and that, people might like this. Lewis had had uh, Lewis has had his character vastly expanded, replacing Krauser. Okay, he helps Leon and Ashley treat their Plagueis infections with medication out of guilt for orchestrating her capture. So now they're going to say that it was Lewis who captured her, not Krauser. Leon finds out Lewis is responsible by a computer terminal in the castle. The castle has computers now. Uh, afterwards, at the point of the game where Lewis was originally killed, he's implanted with a much more powerful Plagas that controls the nervous system entirely. Okay, so they're not just gonna have him. They're not just gonna have him uh, molested to death by Sadler. Then, <laughs> anyone ever see that parody video of RE4? Like, uh, what? What is? What are you doing? And Sadler's like, you see, I'm a very uh, lonely old man. <laughs> And I was like, you sick bastard. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, this is your pin. Ah! It's great. It's a great parody on YouTube you can find. That, uh, you know, when you play the main game and you see that, it's like, yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, Lewis mutates into a Birkin S creature and begins pursuing Leon throughout the remainder of the castle. He is fully loosened, begging Leon to stop him. He mutates continuously and is eventually killed on the island. This more powerful Plagas is responsible for a new type of enemy in the castle. Rather than sprouting a Plagas head, some enemies will have their upper half fall apart, mutating similar to Lewis. Okay, I'm going to stop it here. Um... Uh, Garados are one such enemy that will use this new Plagas as they no longer have a functional face or head. Those are the blind Wolverine-like enemies, by the way. The, uh, the Garados, Gar Gar whatever. Uh, so this is pretty interesting then. So Lewis is going to be expanded upon. He's going to be the one who kidnapped Ashley. And he's going to be turning into a stalker-type enemy. You know what? I'm for that. Lewis was such an underdeveloped character in the original game. I feel like they could have done more with him, but then... They didn't. They just chose Newt not to. Like they just kill him off, and then and then and then Krauser comes in, and it's like, oh yeah, we still this game still got a long way to go. It's like what? Um, and I feel like they could have done more with Lewis's character. So him like becoming an enemy that that's begging you to kill him, like that's pretty depressing and tragic and messed up as well. So I feel like it's better than uh, it's, it's Sadler just like, oh, I'm gonna kill this dude, and that's it. It's like when you turn him as well, like it makes no sense. Do you know what I mean it's? Uh, not, honestly, the plot in RE4 just doesn't make any sense. Like, you've got Lewis, and he kills him, and then and then he keeps Leon alive instead of just killing him outright when he has the chance. Like, uh, like multiple times. In the, I don't know. It's just it's just it's just bloody weird at this point. Um, and then the Plagas having these new elements where they their, their upper bodies rip apart. Uh, it's not just the heads, the upper part. I'm getting like RE6 vibes here from the enemies, like the C virus types. You know, you blow up certain parts of the bodies, like that, like the arm or that, or you shoot them in the hand or the head, and then different things pop out. Interesting, but at the same time, it's like, really, are we gonna do this? Um, okay, I, I guess, I guess they're gonna do that. Uh, the castle has been expanded. Salazar is no longer a dwarf. Instead, he is he is sickly, frail, and walks with a cane. His personality is exactly the same. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how what they mean when they want to expand the castle. I'm still kind of hoping it'll be more similar to a Spencer Mansion environment than it just being this empty, vast, like, castle. They're just, they're just, they just There weren't even any toilets in the castle, so maybe they can add toilets this time. Uh, uh, Salazar being a sickly old man and not being a dwarf. I can kind of see them doing that, uh, uh, again, considering the uh, culture we live in now, like, I mean, Capcom still likes to do sexy women, so it's like, you know, that's good, you know, keep that, you know, don't get influenced by the woke crowd, but uh, I could see them cutting Salazar out, and or at least changing his design so he's not this stupid little midget pirate now, like, apologies for that word, but he's a midget, dwarf, midget, Watson, he's a midget, it's a dwarf, Holmes, dwarf, use the right terminology. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, uh, to, well, 2009. Good film, by the way, but, uh, no, he's no longer a dwarf. Okay, fair enough. Um, he's gonna be a sickly throw. I, I think that's, that's a bit better, maybe, like him, uh, him being this, 
uh, secret filled character that's easier to manipulate. I mean, he's a dwarf in the original game, and we don't really get anything about him. You know what I mean like, like if they expanded where he maybe he was being bullied or he felt uh, uh, sadness at, at having dwarfism and he just you know he wanted power or whatever. Like I don't know with him being sickly, maybe maybe it works better to his advantage. Like in terms of sadness, being able to manipulate him, perhaps I don't know. Uh, Ashley's segment has been entirely reworked. Leon collapses due to his affection while midway through the castle, forcing Ashley to take his pistol from his holster and retrieve medication they dropped while running from Sadler's right hand. Uh, during this segment, Ashley becomes more sure of herself, gets familiar, familiar with pairing and recovers the medication reviving Leon. Okay, that's a big, huge improvement in my opinion. I've been saying for ages, if you're going to remake RE4, make Ashley a better character than just a damsel in distress. Her actually able to use a weapon and helping Leon and her growing and changing as a character and becoming more confident instead of being a damsel in distress is, you know, a huge improvement. And maybe it'll go a long way for us to actually like her character. Because I hate her character in the original game. She is useless. She is... I mean, she did drive the truck at one point. But that's just that's just like one part in the game. Like, 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 give us more with her. Do you know what I mean? Like, have her actually help Leon and actually use a gun maybe. So maybe this is, maybe this is the equivalent of that. In which case, yay! This is a long post, by the way. It's going to be a long video. Uh, the no, the no, the no, the novista, the the, novista, the the bugs, the giant cockroach-like bugs, basically. The uh, cockroach segment has been removed. Oh, well, that's disappointing. I actually liked going down into the sewers and fighting these invisible things. Instead, Leon must fight a pursuer enemy called the Jester, a prisoner who has been locked below the castle, infected with an original play Plagas. She has been alive for centuries, meaning she is sickly and mutated and uses a spear to hunt you. Okay, so now this feels like the implementing Pyramid Head <laughs> into this, uh, and uh, Nosferatu from Cold Veronica, like combining as like, here you go. It's like, I don't mind that, it sounds intriguing. Uh, the Ada encounter is roughly the same, but she is less standoffish. She, is, she assists you by pointing her laser ahead of you while you na na navigate the henge maze to point out upcoming enemies hiding in wait. So, Ada is actually going to help you out in this segment. And Okay, uh, I like that. Well, to be fair, I don't like the maze. I mean, it's one of the better parts of the game because it's freaking terrifying, uh, the maze sec section. So... You know, having Ada there maybe helping you out. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, doesn't that lose the tension? Again, I feel like this is BS, but uh, okay, whatever. The island has been almost entirely converted into being a lab segment. Yep, yeah, I think anyone, I think everyone expected this to happen. Like, I mean, the, the island is technically like the lab area of the game, but uh, turning it entirely into a lab segment, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Come on, we, we all knew this was going to happen. After Resident Evil 2's Nest and Resident Evil 3's N uh, Nest 2, like, you, you know, you know, it's going to be exactly that. As long as it's not like, oh, okay, we finished the castle. Oh, look, there's a secret compartment. I'm going to go into the island, oh, and, and it goes down into, like, an underground lab, and then you don't go to the island. Like, I could see that happening. That'd be hilarious. It's like, you think, okay, we're going to go to the island now. It's like, nope. Uh, you, you, you gotta go straight to the lab. Where's the lab? On the ground, the car, uh, underneath the castle. Oh, well, that was fast. <laughs> End of the game. There you go. Um, so it has been converted into a lab segment, and it's roughly untouched compared to the original game's regenerator segment. Uh, compared to, but is majorly extended. The last 30 minutes are a long chase sequence. The first part is roughly a translated truck sequence from the original game's island, ending with the encounter against Sadler. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that, I don't really know what to say about there, so just a big chase. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the ending of the game is roughly the same, but Wesker is more prominent. Ada boards an Apache now, with Wesker on board. Leon still escapes by jet ski. So Wesker's gonna show up at the end of the game to help Ada escape. So see, see right there, there's a lot of plot uh, uh, issues with that. Uh, Personally, I would prefer if Wesker ends up being the actual true final boss of the game. Like, after you've dealt with everything, he shows up and he starts kicking Leon's ass and you and Ada work together, maybe, to fight him, but he still escapes with the Plaga sample. I would prefer that a lot more than him just showing up as a cameo and an Ada getting in. Like, no, no, I want him to be... I want him to face Leon. Like, out of all the main characters in the series, Leon's the only one Wesker's never, like, fought or kicked his ass. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he did... Like every other character has, like, main character has encountered him, do you know what I mean, like, for the most part, except for freaking Leon's, it's like, come on. Um, but yeah, in terms of plot issues, 
the original RE4 had Ada betray Wesker, taking the uh, Pl Plaga sample and going to work for her organization. You know, it was sort of like a recruitment thing. Like, she was doing this to get into that group, and she betrayed Wesker for that. And then Wesker would later on get a control Plaga sample from, uh, because Ada does send him, Ada does send him a, a, a last Plaga sample, but it's not the master Plaga sample, which I believe she takes for herself. Uh, but in the DLC for RE5, you learn that Irving, through Ada, would end up basically... Uh, was probably responsible for getting Wesker the, uh, the Master Plugger sample in the first place. So... This is weird. Like... But then, to be fair, in RE2 Remake, they completely cut out the, the entire subplot with Ada working for the Agency. And if you got again, if you guys played RE6 and you read the files and the extended files, you learned that Ada was working for the family and Simmons and stopped working for them after they nuked Raccoon City, which would hint that the agency she was working for in RE2 was the family, that she was working for Simmons at the time. Uh, but all of that, you know, instead of expanding upon that backstory and those details, they just completely ignored it in the RE2 remake. So maybe they're just doing the same thing here as well, because uh, the whole organization and the agency is just something that's ignored in the main plot of the canon, because we, we never find out who the agency is, and if it is the family, we don't get confirmation on that. We don't know who the organization is, because uh, they're just completely ignored after RE4. In RE6, Ada is is basically a mercenary, like, uh, she gets, you know, she gets contacted by Carla, posing as Simmons, and she's doing all of this crap. But then at the end, she just gets a call, like, she's just a mercenary for hire. Even in, in even in Damnation, for example, like, she's just a mercenary for hire. She's not working for any specific organization. So, uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't even remember if the, if the files in RE6 even mention the organization. Like, uh, so I have no idea what's going on there. But, um, I could see them just ignoring that entire thing and just having Ada just be another merc working for Wesker's group in this case. In which case, I guess that fits, but... Still, I, I kind of wanted things to be expanded upon to see to have these remakes, these reimaginings, you know, fill in blanks that the previous games failed to do, and none of the remakes have done that. So I don't see it happening here either. So I guess this could be somewhat accurate. I'm still crossing my fingers for a Wesker boss battle, but uh, yeah. Mercenaries returns with Lewis replacing Krauser as a playable character. Again, if this is true and Krauser has been dropped, it makes sense for Lewis to take over. Hell, it makes sense for Lewis to be a playable character in the first place. I don't understand why he wasn't a playable character in the original Mercenaries mode. It's weird. I'm willing to answer any questions about the game. I've not played it, but I've watched several playthroughs and am familiar with the vast majority of the game. The release date of the game is very likely to be early to mid-December of 2022 with a reveal in late August to mid-December. The game was delayed internally and meant to be revealed in E3 of this year, which was unfortunately cancelled. So this game is apparently supposed to come out at the end of 2022. To be fair, the if, if you remember the Capcom leaks, it did actually say it was supposed to come out in 2022. But then COVID happened. And then the game uh, swapped developers in early 2021. Now, we did, apparently, again, I don't know if this is true. If you guys have re read uh, Dos Gollum's tweets, and this isn't to do with any leaks. This is him just talking about the development of RE2 Remake. He says that RE2 Remake pretty much went through, uh, uh, like, they redid the entire game when there was, like, 20 months left. So, in 20 months, they redid the entire game using, what uh, po you know, concepts and models that they had. But for the most part, they redid that entire game in 20 months. Uh, Rari 4 Remake, we know, uh, was rebooted uh, in the beginning of 2021. So from then till now, the game is probably completely different to what the original developers, you know, M2, the, who, were the, who were the developers of RE3 Remake were doing. So it's very possible. It's very possible it could come out this year. It's very possible. It's a big if. But... Um, we need a release date. And to be fair, I, to be fair, it, see, this is the problem. And that's the RE8. Okay, guys, sorry, camera cut off there, but I was I was saying, the problem is the RE8 DLC. I can't see Capcom revealing RE4 Remake to come out this year when they still haven't released the DLC for RE8. So, in my honest opinion, and we're in May now, okay, this is when the game was, this is when the game came out a year ago. So, surely, sometime in this month, we have to get some sort of news. Most likely the anniversary for RE8. Hopefully, we get some sort of information, I think. I think that's the best likely time to do it, because it was a year 
after RE7 came out when we got the DLC as well, or when we got the announcement for, oh yeah, the DLC's coming out, like, ne next month or two months or whatever, during the anniversary. So maybe they're going to do the same thing here, like, uh, we're going to, during the RE8 anniversary, we're going to get confirmation on the DLC, and then maybe we get, like, a release date for a gold edition or something. But they that has to come out first. That has to be revealed and come out first, and then I can see Capcom going all out and 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 marketing and campaign and com, com, campaigning for RE4 remake to come out at the end of this year. But until that happens, until the RE8 DLC happens, I don't see RE4 remake coming out this year. And um, for and most likely for me personally, I feel I feel like it'll be an early 2023 game. But that's just that's just me, maybe. Um, yeah. So that's that. And we're not, are we even, uh, I don't even think we're halfway done yet. Oh, uh, no, we're halfway done yet? Okay. So next part. So this is just stuff. Uh, people started asking him questions. Uh, I honestly don't know what the questions are. So I'm just going to read the answers that this dude posted. The night portion of the village is longer. Mendes has been renamed to Mr. Mendes. Why? Mr. Mendes. His fight remains roughly the same, and the village map is roughly the same. Okay, so that doesn't sound like the village has been expanded, which is a disappointment. Yes, every unlock from the original game is included. There are no OG outfits, because Leon's design is essentially the same. What does this mean, there are no OG outfits? So what, we're not going to get the RPD uniform or whatever? Yes. One of the most important and time-consuming aspects of development has been the game's overall tone and replicating uh, re replicating RE4's B-movie atmosphere. Leon's personality was initially a continuation of the Leon in RE2 remake, where he would be a noble, dedicated and brave, but much more or less naive and hardened by combat. The rest of the game's general campiness made this portrayal stick out like a sore thumb. I know of a few times where narrative directors have been replaced, in an effort to hone Leon's character into being in a, uh, as, iconic, as iconic as he was in the original RE4. I would say the team has done a great job. Leon is just like he was, but a bit more heroic. I don't know how to feel about this, because uh, anyone who's played uh, or knows about uh, the original RE4, and I, and I mean the RE4 that we have, uh, in terms of the dump, you know, in, in the dubbing, uh, if you will, in terms of the Japanese and the Western dubbing, the Japanese version, apparently, of Leon is very serious. He's not a jokester. The Western dubbing of Leon was done because it, you know it was it was the Western dubbing. They just cha they they completely changed certain aspects in order to make Leon more campy and that. That's not what Leon's original personality was it was to be. If anything, Leon's personality in Resident Evil Degeneration is more of an accurate portrayal of what Leon was supposed to act and sound like in in Ari in the in, in Ari Four that we should have gotten. But, uh, yeah, um, I can see Capcom doing this because, again, uh, they like to... But I don't know, it, it, it's weird. I mean, uh, again, uh, this happened with RE Revelations 2 as well, where the dubbing and the Western and the translations were very off. Like, like Alex Wesker in, in the Japanese dubbing is a bit more caring and upset at Wesker's, at Albert's death, uh, it, 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 including in, in the way the files are written, whereas in the Western version, uh, it's done differently like uh so again this could be a similar thing maybe i don't know uh but i think since re7 they've tried to basically keep the 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 you know the tone or the or the characterization or the translations consistent so and and capcom going for that b movie feel i don't know i mean i was never like oh yeah leon like uh, being a b goofy i don't know i never liked that betrayal he just came across as spider-man basically like uh, like like you can tell he's scared but he's just cracking out jokes to relieve the tension which i don't mind but like i don't feel like leon was supposed to be like that in the first place i don't know i don't know it's a bit weird uh, i'm hoping it's it's good but i don't particularly care for that uh whether he's heroic brave or or sarcastic, as, as you know, I, I want this to be a proper good horror experience, if it is, or a good horror action experience, like, and Leon cracking one-liners isn't something I would personally enjoy 24-7, do you know what I mean, like, it's not my thing. For anyone asking, Ashley's personality is similar to her personality in the original RE4, oh god. She just learns to be confident under the watch of Leon. No, there is a new voice actor who sounds a bit like Paul, but younger and less gruff. So I don't get, I don't get that last part. But um, the Ashley one, okay, again, you know, okay, keep give her the personality, but at least make her confident. Okay, fair enough. 
The, the other one I don't get, new voice actor who sounds a bit like Paul. So what, are they replacing uh, the Leon voice actor already? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Or is this for the uh, merchant? In which case, okay, cool. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Uh, so this was after he went to bed. I went to bed uh, for the night. Apologies. I saw the game being tested on a PS4, PS5. The game has some performance issues on previous gen, which is uh, uh, partially why the NOS Vistas whatever were cut. Large quantities would tank F uh, FPS on PS4. As far as I know, the game will be released on all current pre and previous gen consoles, barring the Switch. See, I've called BS on this, I think. Um, again, maybe it depends if the game actually comes out this year. If it comes out this year, then I can see this being on PS4 as well. But if it's coming out next year, I don't know. I feel, I feel like every development game company now wants to move on to, to current gen tech. They don't want to uh, uh, keep, uh, uh, you know, working on last gen tech. So maybe this is possible. Maybe this will, maybe this is a thing. Maybe this actually will happen. Uh, but I think after next year, everyone's going to be moving on to current gen. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mike is still in the game. Yay! Hooray for Mike and his awesome helicopter. No comment. Don't know what that was about. Salazar's fight is only different because his left hand is killed before fighting Salazar. So he's got a right hand and left hand and now you fight both of them. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, he still mutates into a creature that hides within a pod, requiring a much larger and similar monster to be stunned. Sim uh, uh, requiring a much larger... Uh, to be stunned before he becomes uh, uh, vulnerable. The battle still occurs at the top of a tower. Okay. When I mentioned his role was expanded, it includes his contribution to the narrative, and it touches on this. He reveals at one point he helped... Uh, this is about Lewis's character. He reveals at one point he helped develop the injection gun to facilitate uh, Plaga's infection, and you can even find a home on the outskirts of the village he at one point uh, occupied. Okay. Uh, this line is still in the game. I think someone asked him if that line, uh, uh, your right hand comes off, is in the game or not, and apparently it's still in there, which, yeah, that's actually my favourite line in, R in the original RE4. It's like, I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Think of what you will. Die, you one! <laughs> I want that dialogue in the original, I want that dialogue in, in, in the remake. I, I want it. I want it, but I want it to be done appropriately. The way, the way, uh, for example, uh, Ori Three Remake had that line: "You want stars? I'll give you stop." Boom! That the punch in the head, and it's like you don't hear the rest of the dialogue. The way that line was placed in in the Ori Four Remake was was an insult. Honestly, I I bloody hate the Ori Three Remake. It does certain things right, and then it does so many things wrong, and that was one of them. So yeah. I'm hoping they do keep that right hand line, but that, that it's used well. Leon typically uses his forearm to deflect an oncoming mini attack, leaving the enemy open for a mini attack. Nothing like the firearm focus mechanics in RE3 Remake. I don't I don't get this one, so maybe this is about the melee attacks he can do or the parry. Melee attacks can be performed against enemies who have been successfully parried, or if an enemy has been stunned by a headshot or a leg shot. Okay. It's the same amount of action, but definitely scarier. So I think this is, someone asked him if how the tone was, but uh, same amount of action, but scarier. Yeah, I want this game to be more horror focused, to be honest, with action sort of uh, sprinkled in. Do you have? Okay, I think people are asking him. Uh, people are asking him for like if they could contact him privately, and that, and that he's given, and he's asking them for like they got information he can do. Relationships are being avoided entirely, save for Leon and Ada's will they or won't they dynamic. So again, we're getting that whole Ada, Leon, won't they bull crap that they haven't. To be fair, Ori Six did pretty much confirm that yeah, Leon and Ada have a thing for each other. But uh, and I, I one of the, uh, the director for Damnation did say that uh, off screen that Leon and Ada did spend a night together, like uh, they did uh, reunite at one point during something, and they did spend a night together. So yeah, Leon did lose his V card. <laughs> Um, uh, the okay. Uh, the upgrade system is essentially the same, and most guns are the same. Uh, the semi-auto rifle is now a more grounded G3 rifle. Don't know what that is. And the silver ghost returns as the handgun, a mashup of the USP and a SIG. I'm not familiar with guns in the immediate. It began production in 2018. So Ori uh, Ori4 remake began began production in 2018. See, this is where I feel like this is BS. This is BS. This is BS. 
because RE2 Remake came out in 2019, RE3 Remake came out in 2020, and then M2 started, you know, the, the developers for RE3 Remake, they started working on RE4 Remake, and then they got booted off the project. So... They they could have been working on RE4 remake because they were good. They, it was said they were making a fateful remake after people were negative about RE4 remake. Do you understand? So this is BS. That right there tells me this is all BS. Well done, man. Well done, you. You you dumbass. I know people are gonna say well games into development blah 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 and this and this, but that doesn't make sense. Like I said, the the developers for RE3 remake. You know, if if they started development on Ori 4 Remake, it would have been in uh, 2020, okay? Because, uh, you know, they were taking into consideration the, the criticism of their game so they could do a fateful one. So, yeah, this is BS. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have started production. Maybe pre-production, I could believe, do you know what I mean? But production, no, no. Yeah, yes to the first, uh, first two, and Salazar's statue remains. This time, it's controlled by gigantic plagas. This chase can be pre prevented by using a different, a difficult, uh, uh, by using a difficult to find switch on the back of its neck. You can only see, you can only see it, it as a plug, uh, parasite inside if you look carefully. That is until it begins moving. So this was about, this was about the Salazar statue. Okay, whatever. I don't particularly care. Uh, the normal kicks and and uh, surplexes. So I think he confirms the normal kicks and that are in there. Essentially the same as the original RE4, but he is more caring and tender towards Ashley. Heroic was a term used when conceiving of this final Leon. Okay, so this is about Leon and Ashley's dynamic. Uh, there's six as far as I can remember. I think this was someone asking him how many chase sequences are in the game, and he said there are six. A reference to Chris posting. Uh, Chris post posting or posing is in the game. So yeah, I think I did my camera just shot up automatically. That's a bit weird. So yeah, apparently that's it. That's all the info that this guy posted regarding RE4 remake. And yeah, uh, I don't know what to feel. I can see some of this being legit, and I can see most of it this being BS. Again, take over a grain of salt. But the whole thing that the production started in 2018 is a is a big fat lie. We didn't we didn't get that. We didn't get those leaks uh, until 2020. And that was a production schedule thing, whatever you do. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, it wouldn't have started production in 2018. That doesn't make any sense. I'm pretty sure RE8 went into production in 2018. That's what, but that's what the Division One. I think because I think it's the Division One developers that worked on RE7 and 8 that were working that are now working on RE4 remake. Or I think it's the same team that did RE2 remake. I could be wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, M2 was oh, M2. Most likely would have started production on RE8, re, uh, sorry, on RE3 Remake sometime in 2019, most likely. I mean, the game is basically a glorified DLC. It would make sense, do you know what I mean? Um, and, then, and then they started working on RE4 Remake after RE4, uh, RE3 Remake came out, and they took the criticism to heart, and then that got, they got booted off, and, 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 and it got rebooted in early 2021, or maybe a very late 2020. Uh, but yeah, 2018, no. So that, that for me makes this entire rumor BS now, and I'm thinking about it. But uh, maybe some of it is true, maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and find out. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys like that. And as always, guys, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.